In today's Gospel reading, Jesus receives a challenge. A scribe asks him which of the commands is the greatest. This challenge is not simply to come up with the most important commandment, but to reveal the lens through which all the others, and perhaps even the whole of life, should be viewed. Jesus responds by quoting the lines from Moses that we also find in our first reading from Deuteronomy. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Then Jesus adds, quoting Leviticus, The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The scribe is delighted, noting that such love is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. We should consider these two commandments as one, for love by its very nature has a unitive quality. To love God but not others is impossible, and to imagine loving others would out cultivating a love of God, the very source of all love, is to make a colossal error. The first letter of John puts both together. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Loving another fulfills the law. Love is the one thing that is eternal, the new and complete commandment. Love, then, is both the means of union with God and the principal expression of what it means to be Christian. In short, Christian life is faith working through love. In my experience, my love for others, or lack thereof, is a telltale sign of the quality of my prayer life. When my spirit exudes a natural or or supernatural love and affection for others, I know that the Lord is deeply active in my soul, even if my prayer seems dry. And where my prayer seems gratifying, if I do not experience love for others, then I know I am in some kind of spiritual desolation. This is when I know I have to buck up and attend to others, even if I lack feelings of warmth. I also remind myself that love is not merely emotional affection. Love expresses itself as service, generosity, and care. One of the most difficult challenges to our faith is to love those who are very difficult to love especially those banes of our lives. Being grounded in God helps us to recognize their intrinsic value and change our spiritual posture toward them. I was once living in a convent with a very difficult person. Daily I raised her up in prayer. Picturing her and invoking the Lord, I asked that she be happy, be well, be filled with joy. I repeated these intentions for many minutes every morning. After a month, I noticed that I was rooting for her, and I generally cared how her day went. We never became friends, and my aversion did not vanish. But I think I started to love her. Who would have guessed?